a very pleasant privilege and a distinct honor for me to say welcome and thank you. We know that you came here today to see this beautiful new auditorium, the College and Community Auditorium, and to see and to hear Fred Wayne and his Pennsylvania. So far as we can determine, this is a very interesting first. This is the first time in the history of higher education in the United States that a state institution of higher education and a community have joined together to build an auditorium. Secondly, so far as we can determine, this is a, a first in terms of the use of these acoustical panels in the United States. They've been used in foreign countries once or twice, but not here. And then, of course, this is our premium preview for the community. It's an exciting day for all of us here at Ball State. First, it's a real thrill for the college to be able to open this, this auditorium. Second, we're extremely flattered and pleased with your enthusiastic response to our invitation to be with us for this sweet preview. But more than that, we are deeply grateful and appreciative for the support that you contributed this day when you made possible this community auditorium program. It was your dollars and your labor on committees and your expression of confidence in us and in our plan to provide a joint college and community auditorium that made this day possible. Plans for an auditorium on the Ball State campus were first discussed as early as 1945. We conveyed our ideas to the campus architect, Walter Scholler and Associates of Lafayette, and as early as 1947, this auditorium appeared, much as it is now, on a drawing of the future campus as we envisioned it. As a matter of fact, I hold here in my hand a report of the president of Ball State Teachers College to the State Teachers College Board in 1947 and pictured in the center of it, you find a campus plan in the center of which is located this building as it now stands and we are in it today, except at that time it faced McKinley. We turned it around and faced Riverside. Following these plans in 1960, a group of monthly businessmen, some of them alumni at Ball State, offered to conduct a community-wide campaign to raise a million and a half dollars. The Ball State Alumni Association joined this campaign. The community team, headed by Ralph Whitinger, a hard-working, far-sighted general chairman, he spent untold hours working with his committee and others in the community, and he was ably assisted by Richard Jennings and William Craig Sr., the co-chairman, and by Frank Bernard, chairman of the Policy and Planning Committee. Of course, it's history now that these men and their committees were successful. So successful, in fact, that the pledges to this auditorium went over the million and one half dollars which was planned for the campaign. Now to this sum, Ball State has added a million four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to a sale of bonds which will be paid off by the students who attend this year and for the next twenty years. I might add at this point that an advisory council composed of individuals from the community and two from the college determine the policy under which the joint college and community project will operate. And a light committee made up of students so set the policy for student utilization of the program. It's uh, impossible for me to tell the story of this hall, but we have every reason to believe that acoustically and in many other ways this will compare favorably with the best in the United States and also the best music halls in Europe. One wishes to pay tribute to some important people. They really were an interesting team. They carried on a highly technical correspondence and conversation in two languages, English and German. I want to recognize and pay tribute to the genius and the vision of our architects, Walter Scholler Sr. and Jr., and their men, to Heinrich Keilholz from Hamburg, Germany, a man with an international reputation in the field of acoustical engineering, and to John Dittemore of Lafayette, our light, sound, projection, and stage consultant. We could say a great deal about the contractors, the Hagelman Construction Company from Fort Wayne with their superintendent, John Meyer, the Hatfield Electric Company, the Pivot Heating and Ventilating Company. They've all worked together beautifully. There was an impressive teamwork. As they worked with the architects, the consultants, and the many, many people whose names I dare not try to start to mention, of our own Ball State folks who worked together to make this program possible. I mustn't close without saying that in addition to being thrilled and happy, we are accomplishing our dreams. And if you people have been willing to support it, we believe the most overwhelming thing about the audience and about the auditorium 
is the impact that it will have over a period of years. Each year it will have a tremendous impact on the lives of so many, many people who live in our community and on countless others from surrounding areas who join with us. The theater, ballet, great symphony orchestras here, noted speakers, choral groups attend conventions and enjoy this hall in a number of other ways. And also I am aware of the impact it will have on a continuing stream of students who will attend Ball State in the years ahead. The students who will spend four or five years here and then we'll have contact with other countless individuals, many of them boys and girls and young men and young women, as they leave the college to accept their citizenship role. This is what we mean by the life stream of an institution of higher education. We can give them through the programs and the speakers that we bring to this auditorium new horizons, new ideas, new values. And we wish to thank you for your part in this venture. Mr. Frank Bernard has said it very well, I think, when he said that only an extraordinary romance between town and gown could have brought forth such a beautiful project. An edifice designed to serve well the cultural aspirations not only of us, but of generations yet unborn. Now let me say just a few words about the program that we have chosen for this week's preview. Fred Waring and his Pennsylvania. When I graduated from college and started teaching in the outskirts of Detroit well over 40 years ago, uh, Fred Waring's orchestra was the rave, and we went to see and to hear Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanians many times at the Rivera Theater in Detroit. And I have remembered, and some of you may have seen in the paper, but uh, five or six of us one evening gathered up enough courage to go backstage and meet Fred Waring and shake hands with him. I haven't had that privilege since that time until yesterday afternoon here on the platform. I shook hands with him again, and uh, this time they took our pictures. And, uh, and even today they were in the paper. Just imagine. Uh, how, do you, how about that? Well, it is a real pleasure. And I want you to know that uh, we selected Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanian because we thought this would be the type of program that the people for this street preview would enjoy. So it's a very real pleasure to present a contemporary who has found his life work in the field of music, Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanian, who will bring us the magic of music. Thank you all.